Hi, I'm Jim DeCola, Master Luthier for Gibson Guitars. In this episode, we're going to discuss action adjustment. Action is the height of the strings over the fingerboard, or more specifically, the distance from the top of the fret to the bottom of the strings. The action determines the playability of the guitar. In general, a higher action, greater distance from the top of the fret to the strings will be a little more difficult to play and a lower action closer to the frets will be easier to play. However, there's no right or wrong. It, it all depends on the guitar you're playing, the type of strings you're using, your, per, your personal touch, you know, in terms of playability of the guitar and the style of music and sound of music you're going for. Heavier gauge strings have more tension, so they'll provide the ability to have a lower and cleaner action. Typically, a lot of jazz players, you know, historically would prefer heavier strings and a lower action for their style of music. It facilitates, you know, their fast playing style and that clean sound they're going after. Rock players generally prefer, you know, a lighter gauge string so they can do a lot of bending. And again, they prefer a lighter action too. However, it, a lower action with lighter strings will be a little bit uh, more prone to buzzing and have a little splattier sound. However, Rock players generally play with more gain and distortion and that kind of masks a bit of that. And then when they do play clean, they play with a lighter touch and it's more dynamic. So they'll kind of lighten up and that generally works for that style of music. When adjusting the action, we want to make sure the neck is adjusted properly, you have fresh strings, and the guitar is tuned to pitch. If, if those criteria aren't met, your action isn't really going to be that accurate. So to start out, you'll need some basic tools. At Gibson, we'll use a six inch machinist rule. It's graduated in 60 fourths of an inch. If you don't have that, you can use a six inch pocket rule. As long as it's graduated in 60 fourths and it starts the beginning of the scale at the beginning of the ruler. Some of them will have a little gap and that will provide inaccurate measurements, of course. So we recommend that. However, if you don't have those Later on, I'll show you some, some tips and tricks to kind of get around that. But we'll start out with our six inch machinist rule. We're gonna have various points that we measure at the first fret and the 12th fret, and then we'll discuss the criteria that we'll be looking for at both locations. So when we start taking our measurements, we're using our ruler again, graduated in 60 fourths, and in the guitar world, it's common to refer to all dimensions in 60 fourths of an inch. So contrary to what our teachers taught us in school, for instance, you would say 664 instead of 330 seconds. As long as we keep everything in 64 in the guitar world, it's common speak. It's less prone to transposition error and uh, it's just simpler. So at Gibson, we'll use the first fret and the 12th frets for reference. At the first fret, the spec is 164 from the top of the fret to the bottom of the high E string and it's 2 64ths from the top of the fret to the bottom of the low E string. At the 12th fret, the specs are 3 64ths from the top of the fret to the bottom of the high E string, and 5 64ths from the top of the fret to the bottom of the low E string. So here's some tool tips for you. If you don't have a six inch machinist rule or a pocket ruler, you can use various things that are very handy. Or maybe you keep them in your guitar case. You know, if you're at a gig and you need to do a quick action adjustment, to check the action at your first fret, you can simply use a thin guitar pick, and that corresponds with the distance from the top of the fret to the bottom of the high E string. So you can use that thin pick as a thickness gauge. For the low E side, you can use a heavy pick because it's the same thickness and distance from the top of the fret to the bottom of the low E string. Now at the 12th fret, this is a tip I got from my, my first guitar teacher, Joe Jordan. You can use a dime from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string and a nickel from the top of the fret to the bottom of the low E string. And they correspond with all our specs and criteria. So here you have a dime, a nickel, a thin pick, and a heavy pick, and that will get you by. So now we're going to verify the action and determine where it needs to be adjusted. So again, checking under the high E string, I see it's 4 64ths, which is just 1 64th higher. 
And for some players that's fine, but it's not the spec we're shooting for. Under the low E string, we're at 6 64ths. Again, that's a 64th higher. We know the neck is adjusted properly, so at this point, we can use the thumb wheels on the two pneumatic bridge to adjust that action lower as required. So here's, here's another tip. You can take a business card and notch it out so you can use it as a guide under your bridge, like so. And then on the other side, to protect the top when you're adjusting it. And then I recommend, you can use the thumb wheels by hand. You know, if you're lowering it, it's very accommodating. However, sometimes it can get a little bit uh, sticky if you have full tension on. If so, I recommend needle nose pliers, preferably with a serrated uh, inner jaw. That way it'll grip that thumb wheel and not slip. So hold that shield in place and then you can rotate that thumb wheel and give it about a quarter to a half a turn. And then verify the action again at the 12th fret. There dropped it a 64th of an inch, so we're good there. Now we'll do the same thing on the high E side. We know we want to drop it a 64th of an inch, so we'll give it two quarter turns. And that looks good now. Now we'll go ahead and retune it to pitch just to make sure that the tension didn't change, which could possibly uh, upset that action adjustment. Okay. We're still at five on the low E side. And we're still at three on the high E side. So we're good. Now we're to spec. So now that we have the guitar adjusted to our official Gibson specs and criteria, I have to add, those specs and criteria are designed to please most people. Now you can tailor that to your particular style and preference. If you want that action a little bit higher so you, you can lay into it more and, and have a little bit more dynamic you know, touch with your playing, by all means, you can raise that up. There's no rule saying it has to be that. These are just, you know, like I said, defined to please most people. You can raise that action or you can even lower it. You know, if you play with a very light touch, you can afford to lower that action. And again, that's yours, your personal preference. You can adjust as needed. Some of our guitars have the Nashville style modern tunematic. That in addition to the thumb wheel adjustment, we also have a hex wrench adjustment ability, which makes it a little bit easier. And I have one here. So you can see here the, the Nashville style tunematic still has the thumb wheels that are very handy, but we've added that hex wrench ability in the top of the tuning post. So now that, that comes in handy. And in fact, a lot of our setup guys like it because they can be reading the ruler, holding it with their left hand and adjusting that action with their right, and it it's, makes it very, very easy. And that's a two and a half millimeter hex wrench. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the next episode of Gibson's Guide to Guitar Setup and Maintenance.